Uh, so also what you could do is you could have a look at the R clone config directly. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go to, I'll show you where the R clone config file is. So if we go change directory, so we're changing directory to our home directory, and we go cd.config, so that's the configuration directory, and then we go uh, cd R clone. So the config file is in um, curly bracket, sorry, tilde uh, forward slash dot config R clone and then R clone conf. So if we use an editor, you can use nano if you wish, but I'm going to use Vim. So we're going to use an editor to have a look at my config file. Then the config should look like this. Um, so Chow, um, does your config file look something like this? Um, I've restarted the config process, so... Um... That's okay, that's yeah. okay. So once you get to the end of that, um, what you could do is just make sure that your config file looks something like this at the end. Okay, so getting started with Acacia on the command line. So our clone is the preferred client uh, for using Acacia at Pausy. And for power usage, you may want to look at the AWS command line interface or even use the AWS BOTO3 library to use Acacia from a Python script. So in this tutorial, we're going to explore getting help working with buckets, so creating, listing, and removing buckets. We're going to cover working with files and metadata, copying simple files, copying multiple files, um, adding and extracting metadata, and constructing URLs for upload and download. We're going to talk about removing objects and synchronizing directories uh, to Acacia. So if we go uh, r clone dash dash help, there is uh, a lot of commands that are available within r clone. So we're going to cover a few of these commands, not every command, but we're going to enable, we're going to cover a few of these, a few of these commands. So r clone dash dash help is the um, command to find out which commands are available and then the R clone and then help is available on each uh, sub command so so if I want help on the ls I can go R clone ls dash dash help so that is um, getting help um, for that is getting help on a specific sub command Okay, so as an exercise, look up the help on the mkdir command. So the mkdir command is our clones command for creating buckets. So um, we need to create, um, we need to look up, with this exercise, we need to look up the mkdir command. So that would be our clone, mkdir, and then dash dash help so we're getting getting help on um, how to make buckets with our clone so buckets are basic containers for grouping objects there is no concept of a sub bucket but a um, folder hierarchy can be implemented through naming convention of the objects that are contained within the bucket so a forward slash a forward slash for example is a valid character that can be included in an object name. So you can make a structure using by appending um, things to your object uh, or appending, um, sorry, making object names that um, have forward slashes in them to um, to approximate or or do it like a pseudo folder hierarchy. So on Acacia, there's 110 petabytes of 
high-speed object storage available. A user or proje project may each have up to a thousand buckets, and up to a million buckets may a million objects may be in a bucket. So less than a less than a hundred thousand is preferred. So a hundred thousand is um, Pawsey's nominal limit for the number of objects that can be in a bucket. So if you have heaps and heaps or squillions of small files, uh, then it's a good idea to use tar. And in the next tutorial, after this, there is um, how to use tar. So a user has 100 gigabytes of personal storage available. So the training that we're going to be doing um, has that 100 gigabytes. So we're using personal storage associated with each of these training accounts. Now, projects are given a terabyte of storage by default, but that is upgradable um, if you have a conversation with Pawsey. Now, the bucket name, so whenever you're creating buckets, they must be globally unique across the system. So you can't have a bucket name that is the same as someone else. Your buckets must always be unique. Okay. Buckets must be lowercase, so you can't have capital letters for bucket names. Buckets names must be 3 to 63 characters long. They must begin and end with a lowercase letter or a digit. Bucket names may not have underscores, spaces, or special characters in them. So bucket names themselves cannot have forward slashes, but object names can. Okay, so bucket names cannot have underscores, spaces, or special characters. But bucket names may contain letters, numbers, hyphens, and periods. Okay, so um, however, um, we've got a request from Pawsey. Please do not use an IP address as a bucket name. And that is because bucket names must be unique across the system. And if everyone's using IP addresses, well, you can have a problem with uniqueness very quickly. So, yeah, so please do not use um, uh, an IP address as a bucket name. One way to create a unique bucket name is to incorporate something that is related to your work i.e. the project name. So this is a valid bucket name um, on the left-hand side there. So Courses 01 Acacia Workshop 2024 is um, a valid bucket name. And um, But of course, it, bucket names have to be unique across the system. Now, bucket names can be potentially made public using HTTPS links. So please do not include confidential information in bucket names. So usernames can be a target for an attack. Um, email addresses can be exploited. Uh, passwords and secret keys are obviously not okay um, as a bucket name. Um, initials are okay, though, if they aren't a pausey username. And of course, yes, they must not be IP addresses. 